I thought I assigned the easiest problems in this chapter, no? The wording problem, huh? Um, actually, I was thinking, is it, uh, would you rather have the homework, say, due Friday? Are you guys on campus Thursday, Friday? No? Yeah, I just wanted before the weekend. Yeah, because <clears throat> then I can answer some questions on uh, on this um, wording, I guess. I don't know, because yeah. So let's see. <laughs> uh, no, let's do it next week. Um, <clears throat> I think I got too deeply involved in the equation without really thinking about the number six. Okay, so number six was what was the question? Was um, <clears throat> was a system? So that's an example where you start with a second order equation in, in, in a one equation, one variable, and um, uh, you'd like to <coughs> convert it into a system, right? So in this, in this course, we're, we will give preference to systems <coughs> versus um, First order, first order systems rather than, you know, second order equations. So I'd like to convert this to a system um, <coughs> in x in two variables, and we we said, how do we get a hand on the second variable? Well, one way is to define the derivative of x, x prime to be y, and then y prime is going to be. minus kx minus by okay <clears throat> and now that you have a system first order system of two equations you can imagine automatically there is a f direction field you know that's dictated by the right hand sides of this right and, the sl and it's autonomous so what you see is what you always see as time evolves, and then it's just a matter of fitting the uh, direction field, the, the the solution curve to that direction field. Okay. So the question was, for which values of b and k, um, this system has real distinct eigenvalues. So, as we said, when it's a linear system, we like to write it as a in matrix form, where x is um, capital X is X Y and A is the matrix of the coefficients. So it's important to get it right the order. So since X prime is Y, this is zero and one in the first, right? <clears throat> minus K and minus B. So this is a two by two matrix which has eigenvalues. And how do you find eigenvalues? Most all, uh, almost all the time you do this, right? So you subtract lambda <coughs> off the diagonal, and you set this determinant to be zero. So it's minus lambda, minus b, minus lambda, plus k, which lambda square plus b lambda plus k. It's a quadratic equation, right? And when is the quadratic equation uh, having two distinct real roots? <coughs> so if the, what's called the discriminant, right? B squared minus 4K is positive. Well, that's the thing that comes in the quadratic formula, for instance. 
<coughs> minus b plus or minus square root of. <coughs> so you'll have two real roots distinct if the quantity and the square root call the discriminant is positive. So that's that was what it was they were asking. Okay. But there's there's one more criterion, right? But it's unique. That is what? That is a distinct? A distinct. That they're distinct. So it has to be strictly positive. Right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So if this discriminant is zero, then <clears throat> this is a repeated eigenvalue, right? So you can, I mean, that was it, basically. But um, <clears throat> also it's asking to find the solution in this case. And we said, um, how do you find solutions, the general solution? Well, basically, you take a linear combination of of two solutions that correspond to two different eigen to the two different eigenvalues and the corresponding eigenvector. So it's going to be C1 e to the lambda 1 t x 1, which probably can be computed. Right? The eigenvector corresponding to each eigenvalue. <coughs> Let's see if we can compute that in some explicit, fa explicit fashion. And x 2, right? Eigenvector corresponding to lambda 2 is going to have, remember the solution is going to kind of slide again along a, a, a straight line, right? Going towards or going away from the origin depending on the sign of, of lambda. Uh, let's see, can we find the sign of lambdas? Certainly, lambda 1, one of the lambdas is negative, right? B and K are both positive. Well, it was given, wasn't it? Well, okay. Um, there, it, wasn't, it wasn't specifically said, but... So this is called a harmonic oscillator. Um, and harmonic oscillator has, <clears throat> this is like a spring constant. So it's positive, and B is like a friction, and it's also positive. So let, let's just see what, what happens in that, in that range of parameters. I mean, if it's... What I wrote stands for any 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 b and, and k, right? But if uh, b is positive, k is positive, what can you say about the solutions? Are, are positive, negative, one positive, one negative, or what? They're both negative, right? Um, of course, you can see it from here. If I put a negative in front of the square root, then both are, I mean, this is negative. If I put a plus, this is still less than b. So they're both negative. Another way to see this is, in the quadratic equation, what happens with the product of the two solutions? Where, where do you read the product of the two solutions, of the two roots? In? So if it has two real roots, I can factor as lambda minus lambda 1 times lambda minus lambda 2. So lambda 1 times lambda 2 is k, right? So the sign of the, of the free term with no lambda, if it's positive, it means both roots have to have the same sign. Okay? And also b is related to the sum of the, co the, the, of the eigenvalues. Right. So again, lambda 1, lambda 2 is k, and lambda 1 plus lambda 2 is 
minus b. Okay? And of course this is negative. So you have two numbers of the same sign that add up to something negative. So they both have to be negative, right? So it means they're negative. So it really means that on, on both on those two directions it actually goes towards the origin. And therefore any linear combination of the two will also go to zero, right? So since lambda one, lambda two is negative, it means that x of t approaches zero as t goes to infinity for all c1, c2. So the picture will <clears throat> direction field and also the solution will actually converge towards zero, right? Yes? Again, x1 top and x2 top, the superscript, is an eigenvector for corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 1. To uh, lambda equals lambda 1. And how, how do we find that eigenvector? How do we find eigenvectors? for a matrix. Well, we just write that x1 is an, it satisfies this equation, right? Bring everything to one side, so a minus lambda 1 identity is times x1 is, is um, 0, and now all I have to do is see, say what is a minus lambda 1 identity? So it's it was what? Minus Lambda 1, there was 0, 1 here, minus k, minus b, minus lambda 1, x, y, right? So what's enough to say? It's minus lambda 1, x plus y equals 0. And we have to worry about the second equation. <coughs> The second equation will be linearly dependent. It will be a constant multiple of this one, so it's enough to just do one, right? So you can pick up to a constant. You can it's unique, right? Up to a multiplicative, multiplicative constant. So, for instance, just pick x to be one, and then y will be lambda one. So that's, that's the eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue lambda 1. And you do the same for lambda 2, well, it's just going to be lambda 2, 1 and lambda 2, right? <clears throat> so just kind of sketching the solution here is going to be the um, 1 lambda 1 is going which direction? <clears throat> lambda 1 is most negative eigenvalue, so it goes 1 here, and then, I don't know, maybe lambda 1 is here. So it goes all the way this, this way, right? So that's the first eigen direction, meaning, meaning that if I start here, I'm going towards the origin. That's that's an actual solution. Actually, it's, it's an actual, is a trace of the solution. And if I start up, uh, with a negative, I still go towards the origin in a straight line fashion. And the other one is going to be where? Well, if lambda 2 is, I don't know, let's say it's very, it's kind of still negative, but it's small here, then it's going to be still going towards the origin. Okay? And what happens if it's, if you're uh, somewhere not on these lines, but if you're somewhere in between?
you still go to those directions because we set a limit. Uh, I think you're gonna the curve might it's not gonna be a straight line because you're not on an eigen direction, but it will be I think going what do you think? Going closer towards this or going closer towards this? <clears throat> well, that's, that's, those are kind of details we'll we'll um, we'll have to work you know, work, work out. But just just to think about this <clears throat> in the following fashion: on these two lines, it goes with two different speeds. I mean, both are exponentially decreasing towards zero, but the exponent lambda one is more negative, so it's going to go faster here. It's going to go faster. Sometimes we put two arrows to indicate it goes faster in this on this line, right? What that means is basically if I take uh, something that's not, but it's a linear combination of the two, then let's see, I think it's going to go more towards the slower direction. It's going to go something like this. Same here. It's going to it's going to kind of So that's that's how it's going to look like. And let me kind of explain this a little bit. Cuz it's an important you will, when you see the picture you'll you'll you should know, you know, where is the curving when you have two negative eigenvalues, uh, where is where is the curving happening most? So, let me give you a very very quick example here. If I have minus x prime equals minus three and y prime equals minus three or minus y, what are the eigenvalues of this? Negative three and negative one, right? What are the eigen directions? Corresponds to lambda three. It's the x-axis. How do you find that out? Well, subtract, th subtract negative, negative three off the diagonal. You're going to be zero, 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 and two something, right? X, y. So zero times x plus two times y. It's going to be equal zero. So y has to be zero. So this guy has to be zero. So the rest you just you have freedom to pick. X two is <coughs> zero one. I mean. When a, when a matrix is diagonal, there's no. That's where the eigenvectors uh, eigenvectors will be. That's going to be on the axis. So this is how it looks. And as I said, <coughs> on the on the uh, axis corresponding to lambda one equals negative three, this is going to go faster towards zero than here. Okay. So now let's let's take a point that's I don't know not on the not not on the eigen directions. <clears throat> a solution that starts at this point, what what is it going to do? Well, it's going to be a sum of a solution of the component on this side and the solution of the component on this side, right? Which component goes faster to zero? This component, right? So it means that. It's gonna. It's gonna be. Um, so that's how the picture will look like. Okay.
and not the other way around. But I mean, there's qualitatively, there, there it doesn't really matter. But if you if you see it, then you should you know you should kind of know which uh, which uh, eigenvalue is this the the more negative. Okay. So anyway, I, I went way beyond what uh, the problem was was saying, but. Um, <clears throat> Yeah, we're saying uh, find a solution of the system that satisfies an initial condition zero one. So, in this picture, it was zero one is this point, right? So this point, well, it's going to go towards the origin, right? And I said, you know, it's going to actually go some negative, but then probably stay negative, and then goes towards zero, right? I mean, how do you actually, this is just a picture, there's not, how do you actually find the solution? <clears throat> well, you have to go back to your um, solution that's general and find the constants C1 and C2 for which at time zero, right? You have, you know, one and z or zero and one. So let's let's do that. So um, let me do it here. So for t equals 0, if I have x to be 0 and 1, right? It means that I have to solve the following system. C1, e to the lambda 1 t, that's 0. e to the 0 is 0, 0. So this is just 1 lambda 1 plus c2, 1 lambda 2, right? So I get C1 plus C2 is 0, lambda 1 C1 plus lambda 2 C2 equals 1. So let's see, how do we solve this? Easiest. I think easiest is Kramer's rule, right? What's Kramer's rule saying? C1 to get C1, I write this, the the um, matrix that has 0, 1 in place of the coefficients of a C1, 1, lambda, 2, right? So 0, 1, 1, lambda, 2. And of course, the bottom is 1, 1, lambda, 1, lambda, 2. So that's lambda, 2 minus lambda, 1. And here is minus 1, right? And similar to C2. It's going to be 1 over that. So 1 is plus and 1 is the minus. <clears throat> so those two, those two constants give you the, um, the initial condition, I mean the, the, the solution curve to go through this point. Right? So the picture would look like this, but you're only interested in positive times, I guess. Okay. Question number nine, 10 was, was really meant to be very, very, very kind of uh, straightforward. But Whoops. in the sense that um, it gives you a solution, and it asks you for a system that uh, that has that solution. Okay. So I think this this it's saying basically. Uh, Find a write a, an example of a system a differential equation for which this pair t and one is a solution curve. Okay. So what is the curve t and one? I mean, 
What's the, the picture in the xy plane? Well, y is constant, right? 1, and x is is increasing at a, at a constant speed. So it's it's basically the it's a parameterization for the for the horizontal line. So the question can be ambiguous. That is. I mean, there is not only one equation, there's lots of equ systems of equations that has that as a solution. But um, <clears throat> how do you write a, a system that has this solution? What you want is you want dx dt equals something and dy dt equals something. So what's a, what's a, what's a um, system? In other words, that line fits what direction field? One zero. It's a one zero, right? For instance, this well, that solves the system. I mean, this system is um, right. Not only it's not just this, of course. Or well, give me another one. I claim that one and um, anything that has a a steady state at one, so y one minus y, right? Is also a system for which that is a solution. Okay. So. That was basically, and it was asking, you know, find all the other solutions. Well, of course, it would be easier. To, it's easier to find solutions to, to this system, right? But th this isn't hard either because we've we've done that. So, in a way, this problem is really asking is really um, <clears throat> focusing on on. Um, a bridge between the the direction field that we did for 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 single equations and uh, s and the uh, phase phase uh, or direction field for the systems of equations. Um, if you take a look at this second problem and now you ignore this, then what do you see? This is a, this is a single equation, right? In y. And if you replace x with t, then this is going to be a direction field for that. So let's, let's do it. Here is going to be, again, all the solutions are constant here, right? And here, Solutions are not constant, but there is, there are two constant ones, and then the other is logistic, right? <coughs> so the point is that you can always treat the direction field and the, the solution curves and all whatnot of a single equation as being in fact, uh, this, the direction field of a system in which x is t. So it's just appending uh, the, uh, the single equation with another variable for which dx dt is 1. Okay? I'll give you another example to, to make that. Let's say. Um, Say one starts with uh, dy dt equals, um, and this should be autonomous, so there shouldn't be a t dependence. Um,
Okay, communication that's not uh, logistic, because <laughs> that's the only one that comes to mind. Um, sine square y. That was a uh, one of your problems. Okay. Right. Then the direction field of this. As a single equation, chapter one is saying, you know, plot this versus that, right? So how did you do that? That was like at pi, at two pi, it was going like this, right? And this was according to the direction field in which you plotted the slopes given by the right hand side. Okay? Now Think about uh, this as being coming from a system in which basically the second equation is the same, and the first equation is the right hand side is 1. Okay? Then, again, the direction field, or slope field in this case, would be in the xy, and guess what? will be identical. X is T, so it's, it's just going to be identical. But this time, how do you construct the, the slope? What is the slope field for, for, for a system? How do you construct the slope field for a system? You look at the right hand sides and you plot one unit on the x, uh, in the first, in the x direction, and this on the y direction, and then you draw that line, right? So it's a little bit different than that. I mean, it will be the same thing, but here's one, and here's uh, sine square y. Whereas here it was just slope. I mean, the slope, of course, is, in the end is the same thing, right? But it's how you interpret the uh, system. The, the single equation in the context of a system. So you can, in the end, it's still a, a planar picture, right? Just a picture in the on the plane. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> you can see that here too. If I do x prime equals one and y prime equals, um, let's say, y squared times one minus y. So this is going to be a little bit different. Well, not much different than the. Yeah, it is different than than the logistic map because logistic equation because you can see if you're above zero, uh, one or below zero, then it's going towards a uh, steady state. Okay. But this looks a lot like a direction field for a single equation, right? And you can see the directions are always pointing this way. Why? Because that first right hand side is 1. It's always positive. Right? Compare this to something where you change this x, right? Uh, the right hand side. Then you see that the field can go in, in, in any direction. It's dictated by the right hand side of that, of, that, of that system. Okay, And this is no longer a direction field for a single equation. right? So a single equation is always t is increasing basically. So you need... <clears throat> okay? Um, So again, it's the the difficult thing in these simple problems may be that it doesn't really say what is it really uh, you know what what's behind that question. 
you know, and that's that that I agree is, you know, um, sometimes the problem might may some too may, may seem too simplistic, um, but um, okay. So right now you can say everything that you've seen in chapter one is actually a face portrait for a system where the first equation is always the right hand side is one. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Now, last time I, I was trying to show you some um, fancy way of finding um, um, steady states, right? So let me um, go to this example. It's a it's a nonlinear equation, and in no way it's a you know. I mean, I think you can write it as a single equation, but it's more important to think of it as a system. Van der Poel is called, and that's that's how it looks like, right? It has that cycle, which is kind of impossible to tell from the equation itself. So you have to plot a few solutions to see that. And I said that you can actually see the um, find the equilibrium. So let me <coughs> show you. Uh, I found some sort of a workaround. Um, if you go to this menu and you say, you know, find equilibrium, find an equilibrium point, um, and we know zero zero is an equilibrium point, right? But it gives you an error. Okay, that's simply because the code was written in 2004, and we have, you know, uh, latest version of MATLAB. So, what I I was just going to show you this, but you know, you may or may not want to do this. Um, in MATLAB, where, where there is a, uh, an error, you can actually click on this and open the file where the error shows up. I think I may need to close this before that. Okay. So anyway, um, it, it's, it's some sort of a system file but um, if you disable these three lines <laughs> and don't ask me how I, I, I got to this but anyway I just disable these three lines and then I redo it uh, go to Van der Poel plot and find an equilibrium it's gonna find it okay so anyway <clears throat> so it found the equilibrium and moreover it it actually uh, I mentioned this but I couldn't show you last time is um, it finds some eigenvalues and eigenvectors okay and the eigenvalues look complex but you can see it's e to the negative seven so this really is um, not complex, it's real because uh, this is no imaginary part, just one and one. So it's a one eigenvalue repeated. Okay? And it also gives the eigenvectors. Okay? So it gives, well, uh, how many eigenvectors do you see? Well, there's one, one eigenvalue and there could be one or two eigenvectors, right? In this case, there's only one eigenvector corresponding to the eigenvalue. So again, uh, right? And that information is going to actually tell you the, what's what's happening in the neighborhood of that uh, equilibrium point, and it gives you display the linearization. And you can see the linearization. So let me blow this up. You can see that there is one direction. That's the one eigen eigenvector, right? And that's the only one. So let's see how, you know, first of all, how do you explain this uh, when we have only one repeated eigenvalue with one eigenvector? And um, what I'm saying here is that the, this picture, if you, if you kind of zoom in this around this point, in the nonlinear system, this is a nonlinear system, it's going to resemble this 
Okay? Uh, I don't know if you can zoom in here. Oh, you can zoom in actually. Okay? So you can zoom square. Oops. Okay? So does it look like that? This is a nonlinear system, but the uh, the the solutions uh, resemble the solution of the linear system. Okay, so that's that's also something we need to explain. But let's uh, for now just go go back to the um, so planner linear systems. Um, and let's say, so we've seen the case of two distinct eigenvalues, right? Real eigenvalues. So we said um, two distinct real eigenvalues give basically uh, two linearly independent eigenvectors. x1 and x2. So the system is x prime equals ax. And we're talking about eigenvalues of, of a. And then the solution, the general solution is going to be um, constant multiple of e to the lambda 1 t x1, e to the lambda 2 t x2. So that's the general solution. And if, you know, I, I'm not going to... Um, I mean, there are a few situations if both are positive, if both are negative, or if one is positive and one is negative, right? Then we get different. Um, if, if they're both negative, then we said, you know, it goes... Whoops. Then they go more towards the the one that's slower, okay? That is the, the lambda 2. But again, this picture is is is, is only for the case when, uh, when the eigenvectors are along axis, right? Otherwise it's, it's, it's twisted. It's, yeah? But again, I, I'm not going to be able to draw all of, all of them. Um, <clears throat> what, what happens with the case when lambda 1 is negative and lambda 2 is positive? Well then, in one direction it goes away, this direction of the direction of the positive eigenvalue, and in another direction is, it goes towards the origin. Right? So, if you are looking at linear combinations, then you can see this picture. Okay? And if both are positive, then it goes away in both directions and again you're going to go basically the opposite of this of this picture the arrows go opposite so but it goes towards the uh, i think faster right
because if you start if you start here your component this component is going to go faster right so you're going to go it's going to be pulled in this this is going to be going this direction And again, you know, play with the p plane and you can change the coefficients of the linear system and you're going to see all of these three uh, possibly with a with a with a change in the you know the eigen directions are not just the standard x and y axis. So you can go and choose the gallery the linear system and as you play with this so That's, that would be the situation when one is positive and one is negative. negative. So we can we can actually find the equilibrium point which we know it's and for a linear system is only zero zero, and you can see the eigenvalue is one is one and one is negative two. So, and you can tell which one which eigen direction is the uh, one corresponding to uh, to uh, Right? This corresponds to lambda equals 1 because it goes away. This corresponds to <coughs> lambda equals negative 2. Okay? <coughs> By the way, I should say that because the, the, the system the, that is displayed here is actually linear to start with, then um, what's, what's called here, uh, basically it's called the Jacobian, uh, we'll talk about this, it's going to be the um, derivative of the right-hand side course in, in terms of x and y, is identical with the actual metrics. So the linearization is actually identical to the to the system itself. Okay, two two negative two negative three. Right. So when you display the linearization, that's going to be identical with this. So it doesn't make. Okay. So you linearize a, a, a linear system around an equilibrium, it's you get the same thing. It's identical. Okay, uh, let's see, what happens if one of the eigenvalues is zero? What do you think happens? That's the, it's not covered in these pictures. Hmm? How do you make a uh, matrix that has eigenvalue zero? Well, unless it's diagonal, but I don't want to make it diagonal because then it would be. Uh, hmm? What tells you that a metric says um, determinant zero? If it's not invertible, right? So if determinant is zero. Like two, four, negative one, negative two, right? One is a multiple of the other. One row is a multiple of the other. So, so this determinant is zero. So the matrix has a zero as an eigenvalue. What do you think happens? The picture is quite strange, right, compared to the, the other ones. So what is actually going on? How many eigendirections there are? There is, two, there are two, there are two eigenvalues, right, one is zero, Oh, we'd have to we would have to actually do the computation. Let me uh, try to see. You see this 
even finding a, a, an equilibrium point is not uh, possible because in fact there are infinitely many. So let's let's uh, if lambda one is zero, okay, and less than lambda two, for instance. So as an example, let's take two, four, negative one, negative two. Let's see. Let's let's double check this matrix has uh, indeed. Um, Two distant eigenvalues, one of which is zero. So it's two minus lambda, four minus one minus two minus lambda. So it's uh, lambda square minus four. <laughs> well, that's actually that's actually a repeated root, right? So we want to get an example that that's why the the picture was looking so weird there. Uh, let's. So in this case, there is only one eigenvalue. So this is lambda one. Well, it's repeated eigenvalue. We haven't talked about that case, but um, what does that mean? It's repeated. How many eigenvectors do we get? going to be only one eigenvector. Um, if there were two distinct eigenvectors, or two linearly independent eigenvectors, what would be the situation with zero as the only eigenvalue? Have you heard of diagonalization of the metrics? In linear algebra, if you have two distinct eigenvectors, two, two linearly independent eigenvectors, it basically means that it can be diagonalized the matrix, and the diagonal will be zero 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 zero. So it will be the zero matrix, and it's not a zero matrix, right? So it means we cannot have two linearly independent eigenvectors. So there is only one linearly independent eigenvector. So that's why you saw that only one uh, direction. Okay. So a minus zero identity x is zero. You can you can convince yourself so that um, is two four negative one negative two zero zero. Uh, excuse me, x y equals zero zero. So we get what two x plus four y equals zero. So give me. Give me the eigenvector, negative 2 and 1, for instance, right? It's negative 2 and 1. So that means negative 2 and 1, so it's, this is the eigendirection, right? But what's actually, What's actually happening, if I start with a point here, what's the solution? If, if my initial condition is here, it means that A of X is zero, right? So if, if X uh, at time zero is, you know, constant basically is let's say is x one, so it's it's right here, right? Does this does the solution go towards zero? Well, it's e to the minus lambda t x one, but lambda is zero, so it means that x of t is x of one, right? So it means this is a steady state. It's an equilibrium. So there are 
actually all multiples of this are in equi are equilibria for this for this equation, right? The equation is x prime equals x. If <coughs> If x is uh, an eigenvector corresponding to zero, that means I have steady states there. So I have infinitely many steady states. Right? Solutions starting there stay stay there. There's no going towards zero or anything. Right? Of course, if I'm away from this, then uh, then let's see. Why am I going? parallel to this. Well, what's the direction? I'm claiming the direction field is always parallel to this. Can we see that? So what's the direction field? Direction field is actually a times x, right? That arrow, this is x, and this is a times x, a times x. So this is x here, then this is a times x, right? That's what that's what the direction field is. So can we see that that's parallel to uh, to this eigen direction? No, let's let's take any any vector that's not let's say x is uh, so if x not is not a constant multiple of x one let's say x not is well one and one let's say one and one so it's this point here right what is a times x two four negative one negative two one one so this is 6, negative 3, right? That's what? It's negative 3, negative 2, 1, right? So it's, it's always parallel to... Okay, so that's something... Um, A multiplied by any vector is always going to be parallel to that direction. That's why the direction field is is so weird. So, um, right, direction field is always pointing in that direction. So the solution curves are always are these lines. They're all lines. Okay, but that was pretty extreme because uh, zero corresponding to corresponding. I mean, zero was a repeated root. Give me an example of where zero is a single root, a single eigenvalue. In other words, another eigenvalue. I would just do it as a diagonal, for instance, in which one is zero and the other is something else, right? So zero and negative two on the diagonal and nothing off diagonal means zero and negative two are both eigenvalues. And now you see a different kind of picture. What is that picture? Now, I still have infinitely many equilibrium, right? Aligned along the eigen direction corresponding to lambda equals zero. But now, uh, the, vec the direction field is different, right? It actually points towards that line. It's not parallel to that line. Okay. So these are very kind of uh, special situations and you should be aware of but they usually are not displayed anywhere there is a like a classification you know basically we say this these three are the typical situations that come up okay now what are the other typical situations when you have repeated roots so that was um, 
Okay, so repeat it. Well, I'm going to lose some space. I'm going to. Um, I'm going to put that case when um, <clears throat> lambda 1 equals 0 and lambda 2 is different than lambda 1, then the picture was, you know, it could be, it could be, um, again, the eigen direction for lambda equals 0 may not be the axis, as, okay, it could be like this, but then the, This is the eigen direction corresponding to the non-zero eigenvalue, right? And it doesn't have they don't have to be orthogonal, so it could be something like that. Okay? Right. So whereas here it was always like this. Um, I think it might the other way, yep. Yeah. So one was going one way, one was going the other way. So Well, let's talk about repeated roots and not zero because you saw zero was so lambda one equals lambda two equals repeated roots. Then we have two cases, two subcases. The case that the, the, the uh, if there are two linearly independent um, eigenvectors corresponding to lambda 1 equals lambda t equals lambda. So sub case 1, two sub cases. This was case 2. That's repeated roots was case 2 and case 1 was um, Two distinct real roots. Okay, but now I have two repeated roots. Um, and what's the other subcase? When there is only one eigenvector. Okay. And this corresponds to. Um, When there are two distinct eigenvectors, two, two linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to the uh, repeated root eigenvalue, uh, then we say the matrix is diagonalizable, right? That is, it can be written as diagonal matrix if we change sort of the um, system of coordinates, right? So A is S inverse diagonal S where lambda uh, is this matrix, lambda, lambda, zero, zero. Yeah? And S is invertible. So what's an example of, of that case? Let's say I have um, eigenvalue, I don't know, two repeated. How do we, how do we figure that? Um, of course, But this in itself is a matrix that has what? One eigenvalue and two linearly independent eigenvectors, right? One is the x-axis, one is the y-axis. But again, if I multiply by an invertible matrix like this and the inverse of it on both sides of lambda, then I get I get another matrix that is of the same type. So. Um, I can I can do that really easy here. Let's take a matrix that's invertible. One, one, two, and three. Okay. How do we find? How do we uh, figure out if S is invertible? We just compute the determinant, right? So I'm doing it in the MATLAB because you know, but you can do it by hand. For two by two, it's. I can also find the inverse, right? So now I can. Um, figure out what the uh, resulting matrix is. 
So A is, I said, inverse of S times lambda times S. Uh-oh. A cold shower here. Um, what does it show you? This for two by two matrices. What does this? What does this show you? This shows you that that you won't really be able to com to 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 uh, write a matrix that has repeated root and is diagonalizable unless it is a constant multiple of identity. No, S, S is the S consists of the eigenvectors on columns. So they could be totally separate. But if you want repeated roots, I mean, for two by two metrics, it means it's the same. It's a diagonal matrix, right? It's twice times the identity. So when you multiply to left and right with identity, you get S and S inverse gives you the identity. So in the end, Basically, the claim is that any, um, I mean, any matrix in this case, in this scenario, has to be a, a, a constant multiple of the identity. For three by three, is not not anymore the case, because you could have uh, one repeated root that's repeated twice, and another one, so it's not the identity anymore. Okay. But for two by two, it's really, I mean, how it can repeat twice, so then it has to be the same, so it's diagonal matrix. Okay. So what happens in this case? Let's, let's just see the picture. Basically, is A is twice times identity, in which case, in general, is lambda times identity. Right? So then dx dt is, you know, just lambda, lambda, 0, 0, x. So x of t is what? Is x naught times e to the lambda t. Okay? So what's the picture and the, the, the solution curves? Well, it means that anyway, any time you start somewhere, then it goes straight, well, if lambda is negative, or you go away in straight lines. So you have any direction is an eigendirection, right? So call this a special case uh, also, but it is, it is I would say, uh, a valid case. Of course, the, um, the other subcase is when lambda is repeated, but, uh, but there is only one um, eigenvector. Well, linearly independent. That is, you cannot find two linearly independent eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalue. And what's an what's an example? Again, on the diagonal, uh, let's say two, so the repeated eigenvalue, but no longer a diagonal matrix, but some what's called a Jordan block. But just you know, just this matrix, two by two matrix. You can verify that 2 is an eigenvalue and it's repeated, right? You take the determinant 2 minus lambda, you know, square equals 0.
Now, how many eigenvectors do we find? Well, a minus 2 identity times x equals 0 means 0, 1, 0, 0. x1, x2 equals 0, 0. So you see x2 has to be 0. So it means x1, you know, is just 1 and 0. No other one. Linearly independent eigenvector exist. So there's only one of them, so how do we compute the solution? Well, the solution is, right, we don't have the luxury of having two different ones. So what's the solution then? So then, um, x of t is c1 e to the lambda t x1 so that certainly is a solution and that's if you start in the eigen direction then you go straight line either towards or away from the origin right lambda is 2 would mean it goes away from the origin but how do you find a linearly independent solution of this Well, it's the same way as you do in um, when you did second order uh, solving second order equations where the characteristic equation had a repeated root. What happened? You had it t e to the lambda t 